today's a great day. Today's obviously a great day for our football program. It's great for our athletic department. I think it's great for our university, and it's really great for all of our alumni and the entire state of Nebraska. We have the privilege today of introducing the 31st coach in the history of Nebraska football, one of the best out there in Mr. Matt Rule. I'm here today because as I talked to Trev, the passion for football was reborn inside me. The passion for young people was reborn inside of me. When we came to Lincoln and we snuck into Lincoln and we drove around, we said, you know what, this is a place that's committed to greatness. This is a place that's committed. Look at this facility that's committed to player development. These are people that love their university, that love their state and love their football team. So as people ask me why, I am here because this is the right fit. It's the right time. And if I have one message for you, we can absolutely do it. We can absolutely get the University of Nebraska and University of Nebraska football exactly where it's supposed to be. It will be hard. It may take time, but it will be done. So thank you, Trev. Thank you, President Carter, for setting a vision for us that made us, made us decide to call this home. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Severe and welcome to Big Red Wrap-Up on Nebraska Public Media. Nebraska wins its first game against Iowa in almost 3,000 days and hires a new football coach in the same weekend. We're going to break it down tonight. Joining me, former Husker Jay Moore. I know it was a lot of things <laughs> happening, but let's start with Matt Rule. Your yeah. initial feelings when you heard he was the 31st permanent head coach in Nebraska. Yeah, initially, you know, we heard murmurings, yeah. rumors, Thursday, chatter. Yeah. Uh, and this is this, you know you go back early November you'd mm -hmm. heard there that he was the in guy, town right the guy and then you yeah. kind of hear about the the you know the undercover trip that they kind of did uh -huh. on during game day so so obviously there were there's some truth to that but uh, I I love Matt Rule from the get go I he was he wouldn't have been my my first choice right. but I thought gosh the guy that you know just got done coaching the NFL maybe wants to take a year off you know and that obviously he obviously could have done that. But once you got to learn a little more about him, you knew his success, you knew mm -hmm. his background, um, what he did at Temple, built that thing, what he did at Baylor, taking over Art Bryles and yeah. losing, what, 50 players? Transfer, at least. At least, least 50 players. Yeah, less than 40 players on yeah, scholarship. You know, so that transfer out of that program after, and what he's able to do in D year three, hitting 10 wins there. So I'm like, okay. Now, obviously, that had, you know, very, that, that was, that weighed very he heavily on NFL teams and sure. the Carolina Panthers. So I'm like, okay, so obviously, he knows what he's doing. And so then you hear him talk and how um, he's able to handle himself. And, you know, in front of that press conference yesterday, I was like, man, I wish I could go back and play again. You know, <laughs> yeah, just, I'd love yeah. to play for a coach like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very excited, very, very excited. I think, you know, I think the fit is perfect for his, his mentality, everything he's about. And I think, you know, it's a two-way street. It had to be a good fit for us. It had to be a good fit for him. Yeah. Um, you know, apparently there was 13 guys that were part of this process, and Matt Rule was 1A. So I'm glad he's here. I'm happy for him. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, his tweet came out this morning that said he was about 5.30 in the morning. Let's get to work. Yep. Love that. He's, the guy's a grinder, so I'm, I'm excited to see yeah. the process. I'm excited to see him put his staff together. I'm yeah. excited to see everything. You know, excited to get to spring ball and just kind of see this, the process of getting going mm -hmm. and just that day-by-day -day process he talked about yesterday in the, in the press conference and getting going because it's uh, – I don't think it's as, as big, big of a task as people think. I don't – this isn't a Temple mm. – I don't think this is a Temple rebuild and I don't right. think this is a Baylor rebuild. It's, I don't – it's, it's, it's close. It's, it's, it's close. Really, you think it's, that? It's clo it's, I think it's really I don't close. think it's – I mean, even Mickey Joseph said multiple times – we had a lot of recruiting. We do. Mm -hmm. they, he was basically saying we do not have the talent here. We've got six years of incredible struggles mm -hmm. that you're taking over. If the quarterback doesn't stay, you simply don't even have a quarterback. Yeah. And it's, but it's not Baylor. You're right. It's not. I don't want to say fewer because I said less mm -hmm. than English teachers. Fewer than 40 people on the, mm -hmm. the roster when he took over that job. And something you said, the things he was saying, punishment. And hard work. Hard work is not punishment. I love that line. Yeah. Because you got to work hard, mm -hmm. not just because somebody's yelling at you. Right. Because you want to work hard. Let's look at his resume real quick. Because you mentioned a bunch of parts of it. The Temple job he took over was one of the hardest jobs in the country, even though it wasn't a Division One job. Only one time did they win ten games in a season. He did it twice, which is incredible. Took over Baylor, as you mentioned, coming off a scandal. People were writing books about the scandal. What he did at Baylor, turning them around, third year, getting them the ten wins was. An amazing turnaround. I don't know how many people could have done it. 
And here's the thing about him, development, development, development. In 2022, this last draft, six players that he mentor that he developed were drafted by Baylor. You go back to Temple, hit had 11 guys that he brought in get drafted. That's what Nebraska, yeah. if he can develop like that, maybe it is an easier job than I'm thinking. Well, I think the biggest thing, too, to realize is it wasn't like he was getting four- and five-star talent. No. He was getting two- no. and three-star talent. Or no stars. Or, or stars or no stars and turning them into draftable players. Yeah. Or even if they were undrafted, guys who still could stick around and play and have a career in the NFL. Yeah. So those those things, and I, those those stats are, you know, it's crazy what he was able to accomplish in such short a time mm -hmm. at both places. Um, I think a lot of the people when he's hired, the, the stat that came out was 0-11 against ranked opponents. Yep. I know that's that's one thing. I would say, what, the first seven or eight games were in year one, year two, yeah. either at Temple or Baylor. Right. So I would say I'm more of a glass, you know, half full guy. I'm more of an optimistic. I look at those losses because, you know, we've been through the whole one loss situation at mm, Nebraska, yeah, yeah. whether it's first rank opponents or not. Yeah. We've had plenty of them. And I say when you have those games, I, he's built up some scar tissue. And I think he's learned yeah. from those from the situations not winning those games. And I, those, those three against ranked opponents when he was at Baylor, you know, it, it, you know it, is, it is what it is. I know he lost a, uh, at a good Notre Dame team that year when he was at, when he was at Temple's yeah. last year. So. Do you remember the last time Nebraska beat a ranked team? Probably Oregon. Mike 2016. But, they but finished 4-8. Four four eight. Eight. Yeah. Is that a great win? They, it was a great win at they, the time. At the time, but, but when but you say overall, rank no. wins, you know that wasn't a good team in the no. end. So it's hard to judge sometimes with those rank wins. We'll talk more about it, but we want to talk a little bit about all the things that have happened <laughs> from the announcement, of course, the introduction to the new head coach, as well as a win to finish out the season. We need your help to keep the conversations going. You can do it by calling tonight to our call center. Our friends from the University of Nebraska's College of Journalism and Mass Communications are here manning the phones, awaiting your calls while they wait. Of course, they're enjoying some Valentino's pizza and be hard at work taking your comments and questions. Our sports intern, Wave Sam, is also here managing the team. There he is. You can text or email your comments and questions tonight. Big Red at NebraskaPublicMedia.org. Instead, if you prefer, you can always just go to the social media channels, post your questions and comments on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll try to get to as many as we can throughout the show. Here is this week's all-new sideline survey. What are your reactions to the hiring of Matt Rule? Great hire, okay hire, ask me in three years, or I wanted Mickey, 49% of people. Almost 50% of people say great hire. Head to our website now and cast your vote. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start by thanking Coach Mickey Joseph. And I'll tell you, Mickey Joseph and our staff and our players did an outstanding job. You know, many of you here um, recognize uh, nine games ago when we made a change and Mickey Joseph was the head coach. Uh, Mickey did an outstanding job. I had a lot of respect for Coach Joseph prior to him becoming our interim coach. I have more respect for him now. There's one coach that consistently stood out from everybody else. One coach who went to multiple places at multiple levels and had the strategic vision to create the structure around what it took to win at that place. Let's be honest, we're at a critical juncture in our, in our history as a football program. And having somebody that has a track record of understanding how to build a program at multiple levels and in multiple locales with multiple strengths and weaknesses was really, really important to me. I expect our guys to be tough. I expect them to work hard and I expect them to compete. And I expect that because I and my staff will do the same thing every day. That's sort of our vision for how we are. You know, we're, 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 we're not gonna be a new, 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 new spread teams and we're not gonna be like that. We're gonna be a little bit more of an old school type of a team. Okay, we're gonna be a physical team. You know, we'll be balanced, and, and, and you guys, I know you guys ask lots of questions. We'll always try to do what the players do well, but, but at the end of the day, I don't believe you can win if you can't win the line of scrimmage. So I will do my utmost best. I will do my utmost best to respect the tradition, respect that honor, and I hope that you guys will trust me to take us to another place, take us into the future, because it, it can happen. And as Trev said, the time is now. The time is now. And it's not really just about me, it's really about all of us because we have to be all in. If you want to see something fail, have a bunch of people stand around and wait to see it fail. If you want to see something succeed, everybody, even when you disagree, just move ahead and push ahead. It's going to take everybody, everybody who bleeds red to get the Nebraska Cornhuskers to where they, they're supposed to be. 
Pulp Fiction, one of the great soundtracks of our lifetime. Son of a Preacher Man is on there. Uh -huh. And there's something about people who grew up the son of a preacher. You can tell the way he delivers things. He had a lot of cliches, but they were turned to what he was talking about. Let's talk about Mickey first, though, because all the questions that I hear on Twitter, on Facebook, people asking me in the store, will Mickey stay? Will Mickey stay? What do you think? My feel, well, it's interesting because there's a lot of non-Power 5 jobs that are already starting to open yeah. up. You have... Um, Tulsa, there's some jobs down in Florida. We, yep. we there uh, will be coming up. And there might be a few more trickle down. Sure. Um, you know, once you kind of get through this this last weekend. So it's interesting because I think he's a good fit for a lot of those places. It's just whether or not he's he wants to take on that. You know, and it's it's uh, I, I imagine the the movement of the family again. Uh, what you know, is there enough zeros in it for him to mm -hmm. to make those kind of moves? And what's the relationship with? With uh, Matt Rule going forward, is it, is, is it a good fit to work with Matt? Is it a good fit to have uh, a, a previous, you know, interim head coach on the staff and he's not viewed in that same role? Yeah. Is that, can that cause some animosity amongst the staff? People amongst, take sides, Yes, right? yes, uh, um, uh, with the current uh, players on the team. So there's there's some interesting dynamics that go on. Now, I hope, you know, cooler heads can prevail out of all this and in the real discussions. I'm sure they've have been discussed, talked about, so on and so forth. And I hope, you know, enough money is available out of that $7 million pool that is available for the, the 10 assistants mm -hmm. that could go to Mickey to entice him to stay because I think he is a very integral part of, of this program, obviously being a player, uh, the connection to recruiting, and just the, the ability to capture the guy's attention and energy mm -hmm. when there was really nothing to fight for. Right. You know, and I, I think that there's something, there's something to that. The big thing for it is, first of all, if I'm Mickey or his agent, I'm asking for the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, I, everybody wants me to stay here. A bunch of guys who have committed already are committed to me. Mm -hmm. um, there are guys who are on the team who are committed to me as well. So you need me here. So I ask for as much. Hell, ask for $2 million. Right. Whatever. Ask for whatever you want. It's a $7 million pool, as you mentioned, plus the strength and conditioning coach. So that's 11 guys, 11 people. And so I would ask for it all. But at the same time, you brought up a good point. You move a lot. Your kids are constantly moving. Your wife is settled here pretty well. She got a radio show that she was doing in Lincoln last year. There's a lot of reasons to stay. Um, but at the same time, I don't know what it's like to be an assistant, be given the head job, and then asked to be an assistant again. Mm -hmm. It's not easy in any profession. Coaching's probably the hardest. Oh, very much so. I, I, I agree. I don't, and I can't speak to that. I've never, I've never been in that situation. But I do think there's something that he loves this place. I mean, he played yeah, here. You can tell. In you know being a Louisiana kid that trusted Tom Osborne and Turner Gill to come up here and play off uh, play quarterback in this offense and so obviously he has a, there's a special place in his heart for this and I think that is that's going to weigh heavily on this decision as well because yeah maybe do you want to go to a lower um, non-power five conference team and try to build that sure or do you want to be a part of something that you've helped build mm -hmm. as a player and now as an interim head coach and maybe help Matt Rule build this thing and get back to where it needs to be and be a part of that and make maybe the same amount of money you might have made as a head coach at a Florida Atlanta or wherever, you know, these type of schools, like Tulsa, wherever that is, you know, maybe the one and a half, two million dollars. I don't know what those, those, what Tulsa and those schools pay yeah. their head coaches, but I imagine it's probably close to that one point five, two million dollars a, a year. So interesting. There's going to, have to be some, he's got to weigh it. Yeah. I think Matt Rule is a fool not to try to keep him on the staff. Sure. As long as it works dynamically, yeah. you know, with everything involved. Because obviously, he's guys are coming. I mean, Matt's made all the phone calls to his former staff, and pretty much anybody that's been with him at Carolina yeah. are, are, is coming over here as well. Because obviously, or Carolina, even guys from Temple. Yeah, yes, yeah. I mean, Carolina's going to clean house obviously when they get their new head coach uh, after this season. So those guys are, are already jumping ship to come over here. So um, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I want Mickey to be here. I, I do. Know, I, yeah. I, I, I think the majority I, of fan base does. Yes, yes, and it would be yeah. if. You can work it out monetarily mm -hmm. and just dynamically with the emotions yeah. and just relationships amongst the staff, because that's important too. Uh, Matt has to trust his guys. He knows his guys he's worked with to build sure. Temple and, yeah. and, and Baylor. He knows those guys what they can do. Does Mickey fit into that, yeah. into that dynamics of everything? I, I'd be pretty positive he would. Here's a look at who already has said they're going to be coming and joining Matt Rule on his staff. You got a couple people, Terrence Knightley. <laughs> I bet you a lot of people know him because, you know, this is a guy who played in the NFL, had an outstanding nickname, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think people know who he is. Pot roast, right? Pot roast, yeah. <laughs> uh, Corey Campbell, I think some people know Corey Campbell. And then uh, earlier today, uh, it was conversation about the UConn running backs coach coming here as well, who really did a lot of things for UConn as well. So probably four coaches already, along with three coaches and a strength and conditioning coach. It's really coming along. 
The question is, when do you get to the point where you say yes or no to Mickey? Or Mickey says yes or no to you? Yeah, or what, what title do you give the Mickey? Yeah, associate you know, head coach, obviously recruiting you've, coordinator, you've heard, wide receiver coach. Right, right. You've heard, you've heard the OC coming over from, yes. uh, from South Carolina. Um, so we had a great season this yeah, year, especially uh, the end yes, of the season. Yeah, Satterfield. Definitely. Yeah. So you have, you have that scenario. Is, is Mickey the associate head coach? Yeah. Is he associate head coach, wide receivers coach? Is he Slash recruiting uh, coordinator. recruiting coordinator? Yeah, right. Or is, uh, you know, I think the defensive back coach has had re his recruiting yeah. coordinator title before mm -hmm. working with rules. So very, in yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here they have to get figured yeah. out. And I think, you know, I, I hope, I, I think, I would like to think Mickey would like would like to stay here, but it has to work for everyone. It's, sure. a, it's a two way street. Right. It has to be a good fit for everyone. And if it's not, Mickey's going to land on his feet, no problem. He said that it's, he's got a great yeah, resume. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's not going to be a problem getting get him a job. Yeah. And he has to want what's best for himself, but also what's best for this football this football program that he cares deeply about. Let's talk about what kind of team it is under Matt Rule. If you want to talk about things that he's consistent at, it's developing talent mm -hmm. and it's defense. Mm -hmm. Temple, they were a top twenty defense, which is not easy to do. When he was at Baylor at the end, they led the country in turnovers. I think they led the country in interceptions, so a turnover margin and interceptions. Defense, defense, defense. That's what he's known for, right? Yeah, very much so. You watch his defenses, and it's, it can be uh – you know, he's even good as as, as, as first year with Carolina. They're a really yes. good defense. Yep. I think number Second two. year, too, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they can do multiple different looks. They got also they – but I think it's physical, and they have speed. Yeah. And I think that's, that's something – Nebraska, just as a team in general, we've lo we've lacked team speed. Yes, and and it makes so much so much of a difference on defense because that's what we call those erasers. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can mess up. Levante David exactly might not have been the when he was here might not have played as a, a high mental level, but he was so fast and physical he could erase a, a, a misstep, a, a bust because mm -hmm. he had the athletic ability to do it. And I think that's very important. I think back to guys like Terrell Farley. Yeah. He was here at Nebraska. It was yeah. the same way. Yeah, gamer. Yeah, gamer. yeah. yeah. Guys, you, you have to have that ability mm -hmm. to uh, – you're not going to play perfect every play. Yeah. But, you know, if you have the athletic ability and the speed and the, the, fo the foot quickness and the good use of hands and technique, you can overcome a lot of mistakes. We'll also talk a little bit about the NIL and transfer portal because that's going to be a big part of it. It wasn't in, in place, of course, when he was a head coach at Temple and Baylor, so you've got to learn that as well. And then there's some player reactions. We'll get to all that as well. And, of course, coming up, we'll talk recruiting a little bit later as well. Oh, that's a big part of it. But next up, we dive into the highlights. Friday's season-ending win against Iowa and chat with Mitch Sherman from The Athletic. But first, learn how you can support programming like ours on Nebraska Public Media. Hey, everyone. I'm excited to be here with the Big Red Wrap-Up team on this Giving Tuesday. Nebraska Public Media is Nebraska's home for sports, and this program is one of the big reasons why. Another season for the Huskers has come to a close, and while many of the game results maybe weren't quite what we wanted, this past weekend sure was, and it's been a very eventful and newsworthy season. It's never been more important to watch Big Red Wrap-Up to stay informed on what's happening with our favorite football team. And during our fall membership drive right now is a great time to show your appreciation for what you've gained from Big Red Wrap Up this year. Those who support Nebraska Public Media with financial contributions make programs like this one happen. So thank you for becoming a member or renewing your membership right now. You can do that by calling 800-989-8236 or give online at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. And when you do that, we have some fantastic thank you gifts. Look right there. It is a football signed by Tom Osborne. And we all know that Tom led the Nebraska football team as head coach for 25 seasons, winning three national championships. And right there you can have as your donation uh, gift at $25 a month, a football signed by Tom Osborne. His legacy extends beyond football, of course, but he's so well known for football that we thought that would be a fun gift. And here's another option. Donate $5 a month or $60 all at once, and we'll send you this really fun print. It's 11 inches by 17 inches, and it's the evolution of Herbie Husker from 1940 to the present day. Now, this is a collector's print. It's autographed by Herbie, and these are numbers 
numbered prints, so call right now to claim this as your thank you gift at $5 a month. The number is 800-989-8236 or pledge online, nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. Now, Nebraska Public Media brings us all together through exciting sports coverage, quality entertainment, and by delivering local and national news that keeps us informed about the latest events that are shaping our lives. Your support of quality programming on Nebraska Public Media also gives you access to an incredible members-only library. It's called PBS Passport. There you can watch Nature and Nova, Finding Your Roots, and locally produced programs too, including our documentary we did this year, exploring the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Make your donation of $5 a month or more right now. Take one of those thank you gifts that I described and you'll also automatically get PBS Passport. Go to nebraskapublicmedia.org to make your pledge or call 800-989-8236. Those thank you gifts again, the Nebraska football signed by Tom Osborne takes a gift of $25 a month or a one-time pledge of $300 Tom Osborne, of course, led the program for 25 seasons, winning three national championships, and we're proud to have those autographed footballs to offer to you. At $5 a month, our gift is the Herbie Evolution print. Now, this print is a collector's item you're going to love having. Maybe frame it and hang it right there in your rec room. It's a, a pledge of $60 or $5 a month to get one of these. Call us now from Ogallala or Omaha or Overton or wherever you call home here in Nebraska. Nebraska Public Media needs to hear from you right now at 800-989-8236 or make your pledge at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. You can be part of the Nebraska Public Media Sports Partners Club. You'll be supporting our coverage of Husker sports and high school action like the recent volleyball and football state championships and of course Big Red Wrap Up. Call 800 800- 989-8236. Make your pledge online at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. All of the programming that we do is because of viewer support from people just like you. So thanks for calling 800-989-8236. All right, let's get to the highlights now. It was a win. First one over Iowa in 2,919 days. It was a rocking stadium early on, but Nebraska quieted them pretty quickly. I love when you get wide receiver screen and everybody gets their block. And that was a great example there. Nice Trey Palmer getting Marcus going. Washington and knocks out one of their best DBs for the game. Yeah, and here's one of those plays where you miss the field goal, and a lot of people kind of think, oh, no, here we go again. But Nebraska gets a stop, come right back, and hit Trey Palmer on yeah, this love, kind of a switch route. Yeah, I love this route. You got a dig that kind of held the safeties. They're in quarters coverage. Mm -hmm. Love the pulling of the, the center, move the pocket, and uh, the dig route by Vocalette holds the safeties. They have to kind of switch it off, which essentially you got man-to-man -man coverage on, on the other DB, and it was, yeah, best of luck to you. In the end, 14.7 yards of reception on the season. You get a sack here by Newsom, fumble, recover. Again, this is a ball that doesn't always bounce Nebraska's way, but a guy who's been Johnny on the spot for most of the second half of the season, makes the play in Ernest Hausman. Nebraska's well. Got to get some points. It'd been nice to get a touchdown, but getting three was important. Exactly. And you didn't, and it, we knew you didn't have to score 35, 40 points to beat Iowa. I mean, obviously, <laughs> we let up some points later, but you figure if Nebraska gets 17 points, uh, uh, up 17 nothing, they have a good chance to win this football game. Ramir Johnson had a nice run there, 12 for 52 on the day for Ramir Johnson. It was really the only running game that's going on. Get another sack. This time, Nelson, I thought he was going to score when he picked it up. I really yeah, did. Yeah, you saw that wide receiver, though, had a little momentum on him. Yeah. That's, and that's good, good good job by him. Yeah, obviously, you'd like to, as a defensive end, you'd like to scoop and score this thing, but 10 had a had a few steps on him. John Callahan with us as well. Michael Clements, what a great first half, wasn't it? Yeah, he stepped in. Think about it, no Reimer, no Heinrich, and, and they, they stood up to Iowa. Yep. And you look at this, that touchdown pass right there. Trey Palmer ends the season with nine touchdown catches and sets the all-time well, season record for yardage as a receiver. And then you get the special teams play, something that Nebraska necessarily hasn't had over the last and few something years. that Iowa rarely messes up on the special teams. I mean, they don't usually rarely miss a beat. And, hey, they let one, they, yep. uh, they gave one away to us. We'll take it. They did. And then you, Washington comes in here, a guy who really has stepped up over the last few games. Yeah, Marcus came in and Trey Palmer. Think about the transfer portal. Casey Thompson, yep. Marcus Washington, Trey Palmer. Yep. Really all Mickey Joseph guys that came to Nebraska, scored all the points um, in terms of the touchdowns in this game. Here's where the comeback started, up 24-0. This is a beautiful split zone run here. Going to the house, 44 yards. This is the kind of thing Iowa's done. A couple big plays each game. 
Not great yardage. Nebraska held the run game 3.8 yards a carry, which is pretty good, especially when you have a big run like that. But good defense overall for Nebraska. Here we go again. This is uh, you have to make the decision, right? You shoot for the tackle, but you end up giving up a big play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, Nebraska does a couple times on these, you know, these flat routes. You kind of overrun them. The guy kind of cuts back inside, and you know, uh, Nebraska plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. So a lot of times, there's not a help uh, coming back to get the guy down. Backup quarterback Padilla played pretty well, and then look, of course, another star tight end in the making for Iowa. Not surprising that they have another one. It was Lashley with the 14-yard touchdown right there to bring them within 24 to 14. Ramir Johnson, this is tough for him. I thought forward progress had been stopped, and I understand they didn't call that, but that's what it looks like to me. It definitely looked like, and even on the TV copy during the game there, you're trying to listen to a whistle. There was none, and obviously the ball did come out early and right into the Iowa guy's lap. Field goal here to make it a one-score game. I know a lot of people are a little afraid right here, but Nebraska's defense steps up. They continue to get pressure, six total pressures, three sacks on Padilla, and uh, also, you know, just put a, they put a lot of pressure on him. They get a fourth down play here. Yeah, big time. And this, and this game could have been over multiple times if yes, Newsom could yes. have caught a couple picks. But <laughs> yeah. they held up, man. I tell you what, I was a nervous wreck. For, for a team that was 3-8 and eight going to this, I hate that I care so much, as I say. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I almost was, I couldn't sit watching the last kind of drive of this, of this uh, game. Great it to was, see Kalarvik to an Iowa yeah, guy. Yes, yes. Making Good, this stuff. Yeah, big time play. We go to final stats. Uh, a, a time we've gone to final stats where... Nebraska actually leads in a lot of the stats. Some, not something we've seen over the last uh, couple of weeks. You see that one time of possession, more yardage as well. And the big one was forcing those turnovers and getting 17 points off the turnover. Let's go to players of the game now. Not a big surprise. Trey Palmer, what a heck of a season for him. Sean mentioned it. The transfer comes in, sets that season record for yards, has another big game uh, to end the season against Iowa. And Michael Clements, first half, five solo tackles, he had a sack, another tackle for loss. Just a, a great job by him. Sean Callahan joining us. He, you mentioned transfers, guys coming in. That's an example of what Nebraska can do to turn the team around. Yeah, you may not be able to build your team on the lines very well with the transfer portal, but you can find receivers, you can find running backs, quarterbacks, defensive backs, pass rushers. By the way, Oshawn Mathis, eight quarterback pressures in that game, uh, hurries and yep. hits on the quarterback. So that was his best game. He finished with 34 pressures on the year, uh, tweeted today, leaning towards going to the NFL, was told he's got a senior bowl invite kind of, um, you know, potentially coming his way. And I think yeah. that'd probably be a deciding factor. Go to the senior bowl, play well, get an invitation to the combine, have a chance to get drafted. We are pleased to be joined now by the athletics, Mitch Sherman. Mitch, we appreciate it. How you doing, man? I'm well. Sorry, I'm not there in the studio with you guys, but it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Been a really busy week, of course. I want to start with the Iowa game because it was almost 3,000 days since Nebraska beat that team. The feel of, as you're watching that game, Nebraska letting them come back, all of that, what, what, what were your initial reactions on seeing uh, Nebraska beat Iowa the first time in eight seasons? Well, as Nebraska got off to a lead in the first half, and it felt like the game from a year ago, and, and really it felt like some of the games that we've seen that Nebraska's – lost leads in dating all the way back to 2015 when when that streak began they haven't all been close but a lot of the games have been close and and as much as nebraska got ahead even when it was 24 to nothing my thought was okay i was going to find a way to make this thing interesting in the fourth quarter and of course th that did happen mitch when you look at iowa right now what do you think their fan base is thinking when Nebraska's bringing in Matt Rule now. Uh, obviously, Luke Fickle coming into Wisconsin. Uh, just the way this league has evolved, and even when you start to think of USC and UCLA, if you're a Hawkeye fan, uh, what's your thoughts right now? Yeah, Sean, I, you know, the image in my head is of Kirk Ferentz or um, Gary Barta, the athletic director at Iowa, peeking around the corner uh, with, with – uh, you know, there's some kind of a, of a menacing figure in the room or multiple menacing figures. You know, it's, it's not to say that that Matt Rule and, and Luke Fickle have have won anything yet at Nebraska and Iowa. But these are uh, accomplished coaches. Um, clearly, the 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 game has been upped in the Big Ten West. What's left of the Big Ten West? We probably have one more year of Big Ten West play before divisions go away. And at least in the in the form that we know them now. So. All of this has got to be a little bit harrowing for Iowa. I think if the Hawkeyes had, had found a way to beat Nebraska and they were off to Indianapolis this week against Michigan, they could probably take it a little bit easier by saying, hey, look, we're the back-to-back -back champions of this division. You guys can hire 
whoever you want to hire, and it's not going to phase us. But that's not the case. The reality is that Iowa's sitting at seven and five. It's a disappointing year. They've got major issues to address with that offense in the offseason. And they haven't had a co- they have, well, they've had one coaching search in the last 42 years. Mm-hmm. You know, generally that kind of stability is good. I don't know that's the case uh, in Iowa City right now. And Trey Palmer has the best season of any wide receiver in Nebraska history. The reason he's here is because Mickey Joseph is here. Will Mickey Joseph continue to be here, in your opinion? <laughs> well, that's up to Mickey Joseph and Matt Rule. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, in my opinion, probably not. I, I, you know, I think the way that this coaching staff is trending for Matt Rule is, is, is such that he's bringing in his guys, um, a lot of guys with NFL experience, guys with Power 5 experience. Of course, Mickey Joseph has plenty of Power 5 experience. He's, he's won a national championship. Um, so you can't do better than that as far as accomplishments at the Power 5 level as, a, as an assistant coach. You, you know, clearly, he is an attractive guy. Um, if not at Nebraska, then somewhere maybe as a head coach at a group of five uh, school, maybe as an assistant coach at a big time program. Um, if there's a way that Matt Rule and Mickey Joseph can get on the same page, page, even if it's just to keep him here for a year to create some stability, to um, you know do some things in recruiting that are advantageous for this new coaching staff, then that would be a, a huge plus for Nebraska. But again, um, you know I just don't know if it's going to happen. And, and, and my gut at this point is leaning against um, believing that that's going to be the case. Yeah, we're, I'm glad my fingers crossed as well to see if Mickey's able to uh, stay on staff, Mitch. But we'll have to wait and see here in the next couple of days. But you've, you, you already alluded to that uh, Matt's trying to find his guys, whether that's coaching, recruiting. He's, gonna, he's already getting, you're seeing multiple offers going out to, to new recruits. But one thing he has to do is recruit guys who are already on the team. Is it safe to say that Casey Thompson is the most important recruit that he has to try to keep on this team going into next year? Yeah, because of the nature of his position, because he's a quarterback, because of his experience, because he's going to be 25 years old next season when, when Nebraska's playing football, um, the savvy that, that he's shown, the ability to, to be tough and play through injuries. He's done it multiple seasons now as a starter. Um, you know, I think he's a guy who would be a leader in the locker room. He's somebody that Matt Rule would be able to rely on, that Nebraska's offensive coaches would be able to, uh, to know that they had. Who, who could who could help instill the culture, what, whatever that culture might be? You know, Casey has has um, been, I would say, everything that Nebraska fans and the Nebraska program hoped that he would be in this 2022 year. You know, of course, only four victories for this team. He missed the two games with injury, but all that you want in a leader and a quarterback and a, and a, a guy who's tough. It, he, he's shown that and more. So, you know, there's plenty of other guys who are younger and have a ton of talent. You know, I look at the, some of the true freshmen like like A.J. Allen, yeah. um, like Ernest Hausman, like Malcolm Hartzog and say, yeah, hey, those guys are extremely important for Matt Rule to be able to recruit. And they've got multiple years left. But, you know, Casey, as far as what you can give this team in 2023, he's at the top of the list. Hey, Mitch, how intrigued are you for, for Monday? Not just what happens at Nebraska with transfer portal entries, but just this day in general, the opening December 5th day that they're going to try this year, just how chaotic this day is going to be kind of in the, the history of college football. Yeah, it's going to be a little bizarre. You know, with everything that's been going on at Nebraska over the last 80 days, um, you know, certainly in the last week or two with uh, the, the the final days of this coaching surge. And then this week has it, I can't believe it's only Tuesday, <laughs> but th- this week um, and, and, you know, all that's happened in Lincoln already. It, I haven't spent a ton of time thinking what December 5th is going to be like. Um, you brought it up and it's a great point. It's a, this is a new frontier in college football. We've had the transfer portal, but we've not had this um, opening bell, uh, so to speak, that we're going to get next week and and you know i wonder is it going to take on the kind of feel that we have on national letter of intent signing day where so many people around the country are going in or coming out you know obviously you're going to see a lot more going in um that that's that that this this is uh just the way that the portal works so that it's open now players can move into the portal um and then that that'll be spread out over uh the weeks to come when when they begin to commit to uh their future schools mr sherman joining us from the athletic Trev Albert says that Matt Rule was 1A on his list. Any guess on maybe who 1B was? If there's a 1A, it should be a 1B, right? Well, I think that changed over the course of the search. I think there were times in the search where it may have been Lance Leipold. I think there, there may, maybe at the end. Um, you, know, you see how serious Luke Fickle at Cincinnati was 
about making a jump into the Big Ten and, and about leaving Cincinnati, period. Uh, there, there, was, there were questions when his name surfaced in some reports and some speculation as we got into November. Um, I think there were some, some, some questions nationally in Ohio, um, you know, even in, in, in the Big Ten and in places where Luke Fickle was, was mentioned as a candidate, uh, about whether that was serious. And, and it proved to, to be very serious. Um, he took a job the, the day after Matt Rule did. So I think at the end, it may have been him. Um, mm. I think if Chris Kleiman had been receptive to making a move and, and not sticking it out at Kansas State with, yeah. with Gene Taylor as, as his athletic director, that he's somebody who would have fit all of the things that Trev Alberts was looking for. But, you know, that's all water under the bridge right now. He's got his guy, and, and uh, you know, there's no thinking about who they didn't get. Mitch, one of the big parts is, you know, Rules talked about a lot as a developer. He's produced a lot of NFL talent, but he also leads with defense. How important do you think it was to Trev Alberts to have a guy who at every level he's been at, he always has a pretty dominant defense? Yeah, I, you know, so many coaches, that, that is, and, and you've seen it with the history of Nebraska coaches, and, and then you see it around the country, um, most coaches have an offensive or defensive identity. And then there are a, a select few number of coaches who you, you might just call football guys. And that's, that's the word that Bill Belichick, who, who is a, a friend, I think is the right way to put it, uh, of Matt Rule. If Bill Belichick has friends, then, then <laughs> Matt Rule is, is one of them. They, they coached, of course, in the NFL together for the last two plus seasons and go back to um, some, some correspondence that the two of them had um, when, when Rule was at, the, uh, at Temple. And, and of course, Belichick has been with the, the Patriots winning five Super Bowls. So um, he calls him a football guy. And I yeah. think that's a great description because he's not offensive. He's not defensive. Matt Rule played linebacker at Penn State. He, he started his career as a defensive assistant. And then he was with, when he was with the New York Giants and Tom Coughlin, um, you know, he switched over and he was more of an offensive line guy. And since then, I think he's been more geared toward offense. But clearly, this is a guy who, who does everything and has expertise in all areas of football. And, and that's uh, a huge plus for Trev Alberts in Nebraska. Mitch, if I would have told you two years ago, Nebraska would be paying a football coach over $9 million with over $70 million uh, in guaranteed money in this new contract, how surprised would you have been? But the reality is, are you not surprised because of the amount of money uh, the multimedia rights deals are starting to bring in for leagues like the Big Ten? Yeah, that's what it is. I probably would have asked you if, if the Big Ten signed a billion-dollar multimedia <laughs> rights deal. And, and the answer to your, your answer would have been yes, um, it, you know, if we're talking in today's terms. So that's that's what it's all about. Um, you know, you see the way that contract is structured and the numbers escalate as the years go on. And, and maybe, you know, if this works out as Nebraska hopes with Matt Rule and you get to 2029 and 2030 and, and he's up there in the seven-figure stratosphere, Twelve and a half million is mm. his, his salary for for 2030. You know, maybe that's going to be the norm. Maybe he won't even be a top 10 coach. Maybe Nebraska will need to restructure his deal for mm. the last years on his contract to make him on par with with what coaches are making around the country. It's it's amazing to think about. But with the way that it's gone up and the amount of money that's coming in from the TV networks and, and then also from the, the in-house multimedia rights deals um, that you've seen pop up. And, of course, Nebraska has the big one that it announced this this uh, fall with Playfly. So um, all kinds of money coming in so many different directions that, no, it's not really surprising when you think about it from a big-picture view that um, there's a $74 million contract now on the books at the University of Nebraska. <laughs> Mitch, I think uh... – we look at the backs of the Scott Frost hire. We all thought that was a home run hire. So I'm, I think it's safe to say we're. Uh, I don't think I'll ever say this. There's a home run hire for Nebraska again. I would say uh, the rule hire might be a, a stand-up double or even even a triple. <laughs> um, with that being said, is there some things that make you or your? I think we're all kind of a little bit in wait and see mode. Um, is there some things that stand out with you with Matt currently that makes you say, okay, let's let's see what he can do. He can prove. It. I know the 0 and 11 against ranked opponents. Anything stand out to you that makes you think, let's see what uh, there's. Um, there might be a little more to to see what Matt Rule can do here at Nebraska. Yeah, I think it's important to consider when you look at how he did against ranked opponents, where he was at, and and, and the programs that he took over, and and he was. He was competitive in, in a lot of those games, and they were playing top 10 teams. But, um, you know, th those are discussions that I know people really don't want to hear when, when, when they've lived through the number of close losses that Nebraska has in the past several years. It, you know, if I'm looking for things that, that I, I, I'm, I'm really in wait-and-see mode on, it's, it's the, some of the stuff that we've talked about with the transfer portal because he's not worked in a college football world where the transfer portal exists. And then NIL is another big part of that. 
Um, this is new for him. And, and you heard him a, a little bit, I think, unsure about some of the wording and some of the things that, as he talked about NIL on Monday at his press conference. I don't expect Matt Rule to be entirely up to speed on, on his first day in public view as a Nebraska coach on everything that's changed in college football over the last three years. But there is a bit of a learning curve for somebody who hasn't been in it since uh, the 2019 season. So that's going to be something that he'll have to get caught up to speed on. And, and, and that's where he can benefit from surrounding himself with some coaches who have been in the college game while he was out in the NFL. I think this is the sixth coaching search that you've covered here at Nebraska, obviously since Tom Osborne left. But can we talk about what Trev Alberts did and how he handled it, um, how a lot of names didn't get out? What do you think about the job that the AD did in this coaching search? Well, it was so hard, the, the task that he had, because you knew that this search was going to be 11 weeks. You know, 76 days uh, was, the, was the final tally. And he was the first coach in, in major college football to make a hire in this, in this cycle. And you saw what happened immediately after. Uh, Wisconsin makes a hire the next day. Mm -hmm. Stanford loses, loses David Shaw. Other, other openings begin to, to come about. And that's not the position that Trev Alberts wanted to be in, to let this thing go even one day or two days longer than it did. Because when other jobs open, then considerations occur for the coaches that you may be targeting. Everything can change if one job opens. So the fact that he was able to lock his guy up in the hours after Nebraska ended the regular season, you know, it speaks to the job that he did in keeping this thing locked down, keeping it on, on his timetable. It was difficult because of the eyes that were on him and the, and the stress that he had and, and the knowledge that Trev Alberts had that he had to do this right. He had to get his guy. He couldn't get into a situation where it spun out of control on him. And it's easy to happen in a coaching search, especially when, you, when, when you've never been through it before. He's never hired a Power 5 football coach before, never hired a football coach yep. before. So this is, um, you know, I, 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 would, I would say just the search. We're going to grade the coach way down the road, way later on, two years, three years, four years from now. But just the search and the work that Trev Alberts did, it's got to get an A. Final question here, Mitch. I know um, when you look at just hires in general, you tend to go on the opposite of what you had before. Just what were your thoughts of mm -hmm. how opposite this was? You had Matt Rule with his entire family uh, come up front. You had mm -hmm. Matt Rule talking about just, you know, I'm going to be out in the community. My wife's going to be involved. I mean, it was almost like a complete 180 just with his style and, and how he wants to be the Nebraska head football coach. Yeah, I don't remember Scott Frost tweeting pictures from 5 a.m. at Memorial <laughs> Stadium when he got to work in, in the morning like we saw here this week on, on, on his first full day in Lincoln. And, and, you know, look, their personalities are different. And I don't think necessarily that that's what Trev Albert set out to do was to hire a guy who was the opposite of Scott Frost. I think he had characteristics that he was looking for. And some of those characteristics were different from what Scott Frost brought to the table. And then there were other characteristics that Matt Rule has that I think you'll find may be similar to Scott Frost um, in, in what he does and the way that he cares for his players um, and other things that happen on the inside that we don't necessarily see on the outside. On the outside, there's a big difference. You know, Matt Rule, extremely comfortable in front of a microphone, in front of the camera. He's the son of a preacher, and, and, and you know, he, he talks like he's a preacher. He is a great communicator, and I don't think that's been a strength. I was thinking about this after Rule's press conference. I don't know that that's been a real strength of a Nebraska head coach in my lifetime. Yeah. You may have to go back to Bob Devaney to find a coach who was as strong of a communicator and whose communication skills were right there at the very top of their strengths. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's been that long. The coaches that have come, in, come through Nebraska have had a lot of strengths, but I don't know that any of them communicate with people as well as Matt Rule has done since um, the 1970s. Mitch, we really appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Coming up next on the wrap-up, Sean Callahan joins us again. Update us on the world of recruiting after the new coach hire. But first, Nancy Finkin again tells you more about ways you can support public media in Nebraska. Well, thank you, Michael. Time is running out on this episode of Big Red Wrap-Up, so give us a call right now to keep Big Red Wrap-Up and all the sports coverage that we provide on Nebraska Public Media going all year long. We are in our fall membership drive, which means it's time to remind you that member contributions are what make all the programs you love right here possible. You're watching, so we know you're passionate about Husker football, but there's much more sports documentaries, journalism, high school sports, up-close profiles of some of your favorite players and programs, call right now to keep all of this going. The number 800-989-8000.
888-8236 or give online at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. We have some terrific thank you gifts. Here's one. At the $300 level or $25 a month, you could choose as your thank you gift an autographed football. Tom Osborne led the Nebraska football program as head coach for 25 seasons, winning three national championships. I don't need to tell you that. You know that already. What a legacy he had both in football and in other areas that inf were influential across our state. So now when you pledge $25 a month, you could choose as your thank you gift, gift a Nebraska football autographed by the legendary Tom Osborne. Or if $60 or $5 a month fits your budget, how about the Herbie Evolution print? It's 11 by 17 inches and it shows the evolution of your favorite Herbie Husker from 1940 to the present. This is a limited edition commemorative print featuring Herbie Husker through the ages. Now these are numbered and autographed by Herbie, so get yours right now as your thank you gift when you pledge $5 a month at 800-989-8236 or give online at nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. And thank you so much. You know, we cover sports in Nebraska. We have local series too, like What If, Nebraska Stories. All of the things that you watch on Nebraska Public Media are here to enlighten and entertain and educate you. And we do it with member dollars. I want to give a shout out now to Mark in Omaha and Dot in Anselmo and Kay and Matthew in Omaha and Roger and Ord. Why? Because they've been calling 800-989-8236, making pledges of support. Won't you join them? What part of Big Red Wrap Up is your favorite? Well, certainly hearing all the insights about our new coach was interesting, wasn't it? A look at some of our top recruits. I love that, that part of the show, too. The in-depth, critical analysis of the plays from the previous week. Well, those all come to you because members have called in and made Big Red Wrap-Up possible. And now it's your turn. Please call 800-989-8236 with your pledge of support. As a thank you gift, when you pledge $25 a month, you could choose as your thank you gift that Tom Osborne football he has signed it especially for you Tom of course led the program for 25 years had three national championships you'd love to have that football or at five dollars a month how about the Herbie evolution print there he is from 1940 to the present day the evolution of Herbie Husker we'll send that your way as a thank you gift at sixty dollars or five dollars a month Roger and Ord thank you Dale and Lincoln thank you Patricia in Omaha thank you Brett in Lincoln all calling tonight. Won't you join them as a sustaining star by pledging $5 a month, $25 a month, $100 a month, whatever fits your budget. You're doing a really important thing on this Giving Tuesday. You're stepping forward and saying, yes, I want to become a member at 800-989-8236 or online, nebraskapublicmedia.org slash donate. It's really easy to set up that donation. It can come right out of your checking account if you prefer. Become a sustaining star $5 a month or $25 a month, call 800-989-8236. Let us know that Big Red Wrap-Up and our coverage of sports is important to you and you want to keep it coming. 800-989-8236. And thank you so very much. We appreciate hearing from you. Thank you, Nancy. Time now for the best of social media. First up, GBR Homer tweeted out the promo from a really cool picture of Mickey saved Christmas because Mickey did save Christmas for beating Nebraska, beating Iowa the first time since 2014. Next up, Robert Washett, our friend from Husker Online, points out that Sleuth decoded Matt Rule's tweet last Friday showing three dogs. German Shepherd, G, Black Lab, B, and Rat Terrier, GBR, anyone? Perfect. And finally, the new coach himself tweeting out this Tuesday morning, already grinding, good morning, hashtag GBR, with the five national championship sign in the stadium. Welcome back to the show. Michael Severe with Sean Callahan. How are current recruits reacting to the news? Or are they still kind of waiting on what's going to happen with Mickey? Well, a lot of the guys have talked to Matt Rule. I mean, yeah. There's been contact made um, with all the current commits. And for the most part, all of the contact, I think, has been solid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jaden Doss, as we've been on show here, uh, the standout receiver from Kansas City, just tweeted and thanked Bill Bush. Bill Bush called him um, and kind of wished him the best of luck, more or less, and 
told Coach Bush, I'm going to do you proud at Nebraska. Nice. Um, so, you know, I, I think the dialogue has been good. Even, even guys that probably aren't going to be kept on. You, you know, you saw the running backs coach, Brian Applewhite, um, have a lot of his guys come out and, and make some statements today as well. So we're kind of starting to see mm -hmm. that. But, yeah, Mickey remains the elephant of the room. Um, I think we all believe – he will have an opportunity to stay, but will he agree to the terms? What kind of terms is he looking for to stay at Nebraska? Right. That's the wild card in all this. Um, and, you know, and, and which recruits now due to Barnes, uh, Arnold Barnes, the running back, uh, New Orleans, yeah. just based on his activity, I think he wants to stay at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. He actually already tweeted at the new running backs coach yeah. uh, today. So uh, O'Marion Miller, you know, Louisiana kid, mm -hmm. that's one you worry about. Barry Jackson. I mean, those were the guys. Uh, Malachi Coleman, um, you know, immediately uh, interacted with Matt Rule. Right. So you don't really worry about that. But, you know, the quarterback one's interesting to me, William Watson. What, what's going to happen with William Watson? Um, you know, we, we saw Nebraska follow a couple new quarterbacks with the new staff, mm -hmm. uh, one in Florida, then Lincoln uh, Kuttenholz from South Dakota, who's currently a Washington commit. Um, but he's related to the Hausmans on the football team right now. So right. There, there are a couple of new QB follows that, you know, if you kind of have your recruiting radars on. It lets you know, and Friday they can go on the road. Yeah, so you yeah, have the follows, but offers being made as well. When we were first hearing about Matt Rule becoming the head coach, already offers were going out. Yeah, A.J. Newberry was one of the new offers that was made this week. Um, you, you started to see – uh, about 15 or 20 new follows mm. right away. Uh, Dante Lovett was the first phone call that was made. Um, you know, when, when you when you look at kind of the activity, uh, he's a Virginia Tech commit. I talked to Dante. Gosh, I'm losing track of days. I think it was Saturday night, mm -hmm. but um, he, he got the call. And Matt Rule had been on the job, for, you know, committed to the job just for a few hours. Jalen Lloyd, Omaha, Omaha West Side, was at Central, yep. uh, but Speed. They speed. have a very analytical model of recruiting mm -hmm. where they like track. Yes, <laughs> and long track athletes. They and like A.J. Newberry, a running back offer. Um, and, you know, they, they're, they're expecting some running back attrition on this sure. roster. It's hard to say, like, Jacquez Yant and, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the other players on this team, what right. is their future? Mm -hmm. um, and, and Matt Rule did say, he's like, we're not going to – tell anybody they got to leave. You sure. Know, if you want to be here, you can be here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's going to respect every player's wishes, how they want to go about it. But as I talk, talk to Mitch, by Monday, we're really going to know kind of what this roster is going to look like. A lot like. of work to be done before early signing oh, yeah. day, though, right? I mean, we, we're we going to be busy. <laughs> it's, I can't believe we were doing a show last Wednesday a week ago. It feels like yeah. a month ago. It does. It goes by pretty quickly. Thanks, Sean. Be sure to vote on this week's all-new sideline survey. What are your reactions to the hiring of Matt Rule? You love it? Do you love it? You can also say that I'll wait, you know, three years to get back to you, don't like it, or I wanted to keep a Mickey. Right now, 51% are saying great hire. 34% say ask Mickey in three years. And then you have the 10%, I want Mickey with 5% with OK hire. Make sure you visit the wrap-up website and cash your vote right now. We went over recruiting. That's a big part of it. In terms of putting this staff together, how quickly, Sean, do you think it needs to be solidified? You I have would, about four parts of it already in place, but you got another seven guys. Yeah, I mean, four coaches of the ten that are in, the strength yeah. coaches into. Right. Um, but so you figure one or two are going to get retained. So there's the defensive coordinator is the big one. Right. You know, is it Phil Snow? Is it Jeff Collins? Who's been with him for years, and people say he may be retiring. Could Phil Snow kind of be – the senior analyst that makes 200000 gotcha. behind the scenes and Jeff Collins, who's getting $10.5 from Georgia Tech, be a yeah. defensive coordinator. There's a lot of thoughts there um, out there how they want to go about it. But he's got $7 million and, you know, for essentially his staff. And that's – Scott Frost had $5.15 million. Yep. Where does $7 million rank, guys? Ohio um, State at 8.6 last year. Yeah, there's only uh, five or six higher than Nebraska right now. I mean, and the numbers are very fluid on that stuff. Right. Getting that defensive coordinator obviously is a big part of it. Um, having a, a head coach that is kind of defensive oriented. You, you, do defensive coordinators want to work for, that way with a head coach that is defensive oriented? Would they rather work with somebody you think who's on the other side of the ball and leaves them alone? Yeah, that's a good question because I've been, you know, Bill Callahan, obviously an offensive minded sure. coach, but then you see Bo Pelini come in here, defensive minded coach, you know, has his brother on staff and, and uh, many other guys. So, uh, I think a defensive-minded coach, I, when I was, we were going through this new, knew we were going to have to make a hire, I was in favor of a defensive-minded coach. I think yeah. that suits Nebraska well. I think that fits the Big Ten uh, very well, especially the Big Ten West. It's just, listen, you play, you play good special teams, you play outstanding defense, and you play uh, 
uh, comparable uh, offense, and you're going to be you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay in this conference. And uh, so I, I think getting that higher and just figuring out who, if that, who's that guy going to be. So you got to figure out okay who's on the who's on the roster now that fits the style of defense we want. Right. Okay. Who is, is there? Do we have anyone? Could, is it, well, it's three, four, four, three, whatever it is. And then who do we have to go get? Obviously, the depth of the def de defensive line is. A huge issue. I mean, it was a huge issue coming in this year. You saw the transfer portal stuff. Um, you get a couple guys coming off of there, but they need to get, get some D linemen. Um, very young. I think the linebacker room is very good. Obviously, we've seen sure. with with Houseman. Um, you get Rymers back, correct? You yep. get Rymers, you yep. get Henders yep. back. So that that room's going to be okay. Uh, secondary, I think, is still young. So you just got to go in and get some dogs up front on this defensive line and for Terrence Knight and to coach and develop and, and get going there. But you got to kind of figure out what who here is now can fit your scheme. And then you go find other guys who can replace it, whether it's a transfer portal or, or start throwing out uh, offers to other recruits. We kind of gave our feel about whether or not Mickey would be back. Sean would get George. What do, you, what do you think about whether or not he'll stay on the staff? Well, I, I think we all agree he's going to get the opportunity to but what are Mickey's terms um, obviously he wants another two-year deal but sure you know, he, I've been told he might even want a three-year opportunity and uh, you know he's was, was making 600 got about a hundred thousand more as the interim head coach which was so, a steal uh, yeah you, you look at I mean he probably should have gotten over a million mm -hmm. for this past year's work he made 700 and I, I think in Mickey's eyes he believes he's, he's definitely a million dollar coach mm -hmm. um, but how much more over that is he and and what does Matt Rule have in mind um, you know, Vince Merrow's a million dollar coach. It's not a coordinator. Um, is the structure because the hires they're making, like Bethel and, yeah. and Knighton, the, these don't strike me as real high dollar hires. Like, you know, they're going to make good money, but these aren't $800,000, $700,000 assistants. Right. Now, um, Elijah, the, the guy at Texas AM, mm -hmm. um, he's an 800 and some thousand dollar D line coach, which is third highest in the country. Elijah, Elijah Wilson, I believe. Might need a raise to get him um, to come yeah, here. Yeah, and a guy like that would be over a million right. as an assistant. So, you know, that $7 million can go pretty quick because sure. you know that um, the offensive coordinator, um, Satterfield, is going to get over a million. Yeah, So, it, the, and we already know through the conditioning, of course, and if it's Mickey, million is easy in terms of, but it's also what you're, the title going to be too, right? So, I mean, you'd have to be like a receivers coach, associate head coach. Right, together. Um, yeah. You have to kind of, to justify that kind of pay mm -hmm. and the structure of titles, you have to give them something like that. Burning question, Sean. <laughs> Burning question. Um, what will things look like by Monday? Um, and actually Tuesday's show when we come back on this set next week because uh, we're going to probably know a new coaching staff by that point. And obviously uh, the transfer portal will be fully booted. Will Mickey Joseph be on the staff? That's, that's the question, right? That's the, that's the million dollar question I think right now. Kind of hard not to say that. Will Mickey Joseph be on the staff? That's a big part of it as well. Um, Give him all the money he wants, I think. <laughs> Join us next Tuesday night. One final time this year as we put a bow on the season and begin to look ahead at the first year of Matt Rule era at Nebraska. Our thanks to Mitch Sherman, Sean Callahan, and our student volunteers in the call center for joining us tonight. For Jay Moore, and I mentioned Sean Callahan, I'm Michael Severe. We'll see you next week on Big Red Wrap-Up.